Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to bring you a video that's been pretty highly requested. Um, I've also kind of been promising that I would do this video for a while, so here it is. Gear for canoe trip. I'm pretty happy with all the gear that I have now. We go pretty lightweight on our canoe trips. Uh, one bag, that includes everything we need, so I've got it pretty pared down, pretty happy with everything. I'm at the point now where I don't feel like I need to upgrade any of my gear. Um, yeah, so without further ado, I will put timestamps to uh, the different sections of gear down at the bottom. So if you're interested in something in particular, just go down and click the timestamp. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. I guess we'll start with my bag, first of all. This is a cheap bag that I picked up for like 75 bucks on Amazon. Um, if you guys watch my videos at all, you'll see that Ryan has a Sea Line Pro um, dry bag. And it's a really good bag. And I had also the Sea Line Pro, but I had to get rid of it because I have the shortest torso known to mankind, <laughs> and the harness as 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 small as I could put the harness, it did not fit me. It was like hanging way past my butt. It was super uncomfortable. I could never load it up properly, so I decided to return it and go with something else that hopefully the harness would fit me. And I took a chance on this guy. I saw it on Amazon. I worked out all the measurements, um, and I thought that harness would probably fit my back. It's a very small, cheap harness system, but because I keep my bag so light, it doesn't bother me. Even on the longer portages, I don't find that it hurts me at all. Um, the, the waist strap is really skinny and thin, it's just like a nylon, um, and there's not a whole lot of padding. So I again, I did not buy this because it was an amazing bag, I bought it because it fits my back, which is better than a really good bag that doesn't fit, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, it's actually held up. This is my second season using it, and I'm really happy with it. I can fit all my stuff in it, and like I said, I keep everything really lightweight. Um, when it comes to comfort, I'd rather go light than comfortable, so... Um, anyways, that's my bag. It's called the Earth Pack, and it's 55 liters, and it's perfect for my gear. Um, I've never felt that this bag was too small for all my gear, and that's including food for like a four or five day canoe trip, so. So that's it. Earth pack bag. It rolls down, clips down at the sides. It's good. Okay, so first off, we'll start with like the sleep shelter system. I'll start with sleeping bag. So this is the Mountain Warehouse Extreme Lightweight Down. It is not by any means extreme, but it is, however, lightweight. I probably would not use it if I knew the temps were going below 5 degrees Celsius. Definitely our summer bag. It's lightweight, it's small, really like it. It's been great. Um, but yeah, definitely warm weather only. Uh, sleeping pad. We saved up our pennies for a long time, went through countless cheap pads, and finally came out to the Thermarest Neo Air X-Therm. Again, it's pretty small. Comes with a pump sack, so you can use it in cold weather as well. Um, I've slept on this thing in minus 15, with no extra things underneath it, on top of it. Just this, and it kept me super warm. I never lost any heat out the bottom, so that's great. There it is, comparison to an Algene water bottle. It's pretty small, super light, and very happy with it. It's pretty comfortable for how light it is. Next is our tent. Now, if I was going on a solo trip, I really don't think I would bring a tent. And if I would, it would not be this one. This is the Wilderness Excursions uh, two-person tent. Here's the poles with it. Usually when Ryan and I go on a canoe trip, I'll carry the poles and he'll carry the tent. Um, it's just the best way to do it to divvy up the weight. Um, this tent weighs, I think, three and a half pounds. I don't know. I'll have it down at the bottom here. Um, but yeah, we've had this for three, three solid seasons now. We've used it every single trip on those, and it's held up amazingly. It just recently has a hole in it because uh, I did not cut Riz's nails on the most recent trip we just did, so we got to do some patchwork. But it's been a great tent. Really, really like uh, the setup of it and ease of use and the whole I, I just really like it we both really like it fits grids in there perfectly it's awesome and last but not least as far as shelter goes is a really good lightweight tarp aquaquest 
AquaQuest makes some really, really awesome tarps. Um, they just sent me this one, but the, the one I've been using for the past four years has held up amazingly. It has zero rips or tears. It's been set up in all kinds of configurations. Uh, 10 by 10 is my favorite favorite dimensions to get for for a tart because you can set it up in all kinds of different ways. Um, it's very versatile. And then, as I said, I would not bring this tent if I was going on a solo trip, which I will be doing this year. Um, so I think instead, if it's not bug season, which it isn't, bugs are done, I'll just bring a tarp and a ground sheet and then my two other sleep, my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag. And that will be my entire s shelter and sleep system. So that'll be my fall shelter, sleep system, everything all together, and that weighs nothing. This is just the uh, the ground tarp that actually came with this tent, and it's perfect for like a one-person ground sheet. Oh, I, I guess I could kind of add to that. I never bring a chair on any of my trips because as a avid outdoorsy guy would say, I live like a peasant on my trips, uh, which is totally fine by me, but I always, always bring a piece of Reflectix. It doubles as a sit pad, it doubles as something to lay on if it gets cold or sit by the fire on, you don't get your butt dirty. If it's wet out, you can put it on, sit, up, sit on that, keeps you dry. It literally has endless uses and it weighs nothing and you can pack it up to whatever you want. So that is my chair slash seat slash everything. I suppose chair and seat are the same thing. <laughs> to add to my sleep system, before I forget, I also keep a little pillow. I actually don't love it. I much prefer using clothes in a bag um, to lay on. So it's only like a, an ounce and a half to carry this, but it's not even worth it's not even worth it to me because it's not really that comfortable. Next up, we'll deal with cook kit. My cook kit or mess kit is completely self-contained. This is it in a nutshell. Everything I bring can be cooked in a pot, and that's it. Um, and then I guess you can add a water bottle to that system, and maybe even your water filter because um, you kind of need all of this to cook I guess. Oh, and I always bring an extra mug for my coffee in the morning and for when you have like uh, extra meals like let's say I did shepherd's pie I would rehydrate the filling in this and I would make the uh, mashed potatoes in this. Just boil water first, put it in there, put the filling in there. If I want to go really lightweight I won't bring a mug. This is, first of all, this is the Tokes 750 mil titanium cup. Absolutely love it. It has a bale on it, and, uh, and it fits all of my needs. I'm not a very big person. I don't need to eat a lot. So this does the trick more than does the trick for me. I'll get nice and close. So this is the Tokes 750 milliliter cook cup. It's titanium. It's super light. And I also have a titanium spork. This one is by Finesse City. Kind of looks like the Snow Peak one, but I wasn't willing to pay the extra couple bucks at the time. This is my cook kit. It has a bale on it, which is extremely handy. Don't even bother getting one without a bale. It's so much easier to set up over the fire. Um, has a nice little lid on it. Super loose. And inside that, I keep my tiny little burner. This is uh, one that I've had for years and years. It's made by BRS. It is also titanium. I'll just show you that quickly if I can ever get it out. So that's it. And it just unravels and it's the perfect little burner and it works great on such a small pot. And then also inside I just keep a little Bic lighter. And then inside the pot this guy fits perfectly in there. It's a small one. It's the 110 gram fuel canister, um, and yeah. I don't prefer the, any brand over whatever. This is just one that I picked up at Mac when I was there. And this all fits in here, just like that. For dishes, I'll usually just uh, scrape out the pot with whatever is around. Some t I've used pine needles, I've used uh, sand, I've used moss to clean out the pot and then I'll just boil water in it afterward um, and then that disinfects it and everything and it's worked for us you're not left with uh, soapy residue in the waters uh, it's just it's just better I don't know, in my opinion 
But sometimes I will bring a bar of all-in-one soap. This is made by Dr. Bronner's. It's all natural, and it uh, it doubles as everything. You can use it in your hair. You can use it on your body. You can use it for your clothes. You can use it for your dishes. Everything you could possibly want, you can use this for. Okay. Next up, we'll get into some miscellaneous items. So part of the cook kit, like I showed you earlier, is a water filter system. We use the Sawyer Mini. Some people say it's really slow. It kind of is. doesn't bother me at all. It's the lightest thing going and I'm happy with that. Um, it works great. It's good for years and years. Uh, there's no downside to it, in my opinion. Uh, firewood collection. We always bring a little lightweight saw. I do not bring an axe on my trips. Um, you're putting the risk of hurting yourself pretty high if you bring an axe and use an axe when you're out there by yourself or even in even just two of you. It's really not necessary. You're pretty much just making a fire to cook because you're you're just going for the for the whole day. Basically, you're traveling, so a nice little saw. It's easy, it's safe, it's lightweight. And that works for us. Um, if you're going into bear country, bring your bear spray. It, uh, it kind of sucks to lug, lug around, like it's pretty heavy, but uh, but if you need it and you don't have it, not going to be good. Um, I always bring a fire steel. I also, as you saw in my cook kit, bring a lighter. Those are my two forms of making fire. I've never really had an issue. Safety kit. Always bring one. First aid kit. Make sure you keep it up as you go. If you use some band-aids, make sure you replace them, whatever. Toilet paper. Always bring yourself some toilet paper. Dispose of it properly. Uh, usually there's thunder boxes everywhere we go. If there isn't, dig a cat hole. Do the things. Don't just leave your toilet paper out. Girls, if you use toilet paper, bury it. Don't just don't just throw it. Don't just chuck it. Bury it. If there's no thunder box. Um Something I would use in bug season, but obviously not any other time, is a bug shirt. This is the original bug shirt. I will have links to everything that I can find in the description. I absolutely love this bug shirt. I've used a lot of cheap bug shirts and they suck. This one's the best. I'm not sponsored, I think I have to say that. But I just really like it. Bought it with my own money. All my hygiene stuff usually fits in a bag about this big. Let's go through that now. So earlier I talked about this bar of soap. Um, if I'm going on longer trips, I will bring it. If I'm not going on long trips, like four to five, mm, five days is pushing it, but four days I'll just wash off in the water and it's usually fine. Um, but for any longer, I just recently did a seven day trip with friends and uh, we definitely needed to wash. So a little bar of soap, the one I talked about earlier, um, is great. On canoe trips, when you're going lightweight, you want stuff that doubles for everything. So that is this, and you're not lugging around a bottle of the campsites or whatever that could possibly spill in your bag. Um, I don't know. I just find a bar of soap so much better, and you're not lugging around water water weight because it's just a bar. It's dry. I also, in that case, bring a little bar of conditioner. So this actually suds into conditioner for your hair. We have long curly hair like I do, you need that. Um, but again, I won't bring that on shorter trips, just the longer ones. The rest of my hygiene kit involves contacts, because I wear contacts. Uh, contact solution and this, and then toothbrush and toothpaste. I bring a bamboo toothbrush, because it's extremely light. Then I've cut it down so it can fit inside um, a small baggie. And that's it. Super light. Um, as far as more miscellaneous items goes, I bring a knife. Sometimes I bring this guy. Sometimes I bring my more expensive knives. Um, this guy is just a good all-around beater knife. It's uh, the Mora Bushcraft Black. Canoe kit. You need a safety kit. I much prefer these to like the big bulky bolt boat kit ones. Um, this is made by Northwater. It clips to your canoe and you put it on at the beginning of your trip and you don't worry about it till the end of the trip. It's got a bale on it, it's got the rope, the whistle, that's all you need. It's 
good. Next up is a PLB slash GPS whatever tracker um, SOS button. I'm using the Spot X. I can bring this on, bring this with me on trips. If I go on a solo trip, I can text Ryan from this guy. Um, yeah, it's always good to have an emergency contact situation because if you do get into a sticky situation, you can get yourself out of there. Um, very, very smart thing to do. So that's that. And then I bring a food bag, and all of my food goes in this. And along inside my food bag, I put my hanging cord, and they stay together always so that I never get them separated. This is just a 10 liter food bag, and this will hold food for me for. Definitely a five-day trip. I could probably even squeeze seven days worth of food in this and put that inside my bag. Um, I dehydrate all of my own food. Food itself is probably a whole separate video, but just to give you guys some ideas of some stuff I bring, I'll bring, I'll make my own chili at home and dehydrate that. Um, spaghetti, any kind of pasta dish, any kind of like all-in-one rice dish, those are good. Uh, and yeah, just lightweight bars and fruit bars, some things that will give me some nutrition like uh, like fruit leather and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I might do, if it's requested, I will do a full food video um, just pertaining to that because, yeah, like I said, that's, that's a whole other subject in itself. Almost forgot to mention the boat I would use for a solo trip is my Swift Prospector 14. Um, the seat is currently out of it. But this is it. Beautiful blue bottom. Gorgeous. The paddle I'm using is Bending Branches. Love this paddle. It's um, alderwood blades with a carbon fiber handle. And the shoes that I use are these. They're called All Leader uh, Water Shoes. This has been my second season with them and they've been awesome. I really like them. They dry out really fast. The insole comes out. For warm weather, those ones are great. So that's pretty much it for the bulk of my stuff. Um, I will bring these boots on a colder weather trip and for a warm weather trip, I'll bring my all liters. Ooh, almost forgot one of my favorite things ever is my headlamp. This is my BioLite Headlamp 200. Absolutely love this thing. It weighs 50 grams and it's so, so small. It's super lightweight. It doesn't bounce around um, and it's very, very adjustable. And it, it goes, does the things. And it's rechargeable, which is nice because I'm always bringing stuff that's rechargeable for my, uh, for my camera batteries, batteries and stuff anyway. So that, this thing is like a gem. I really, really like it. I really like it. And I drew a little tree on it to separate it from Ryan's, because Ryan's is also black. But, uh, yeah, that's it. As far as that goes, um, another aspect I have for my trips is camera gear. So, for those who are interested, we'll go into my camera gear right now. Okay, so I keep all of my camera gear in this 5 liter mech nano bag. I'll take all that out and show you. Okay, so this is pretty much the bulk of my camera gear. Um, besides my main camera that you're watching this on right now, <clears throat> which is a Canon M50, and also the uh, Manfrotto, one of the little action tripods. Um, so other than that, I have a GoPro, Hero 7, uh, and this these Jaws clamps. These are really, really good. Super awesome for filming on canoe trips because it just clips to the canoe and yeah. I really like that. That's super, super handy. Use it on every single trip. Um, I keep a little pouch or either I use this pouch or if I want to go just a little bit lighter weight, I'll use just a, like a Ziploc bag. And in there I keep all my extra batteries for the GoPro and the main camera and a couple of extra um, cards and then the cloth to wipe that. <laughs> 
So that is that. And on a shorter trip, that's pretty much all I'll bring. But on a longer trip, I obviously need to start recharging batteries at some point. Um, so I'll bring the GoPro dual charger for the GoPro batteries. The dual charger for the main camera batteries. This is just a cheap one, and I believe it does the cam the Canon batteries as well, but I don't know. So Sometimes, uh, for the most part, I use these. Ever since I got the M50, I got these cheapo batteries, and they're not... They're not anywhere near as good as the Canon ones, but they do the trick. And they're rechargeable. They both charge at the same time, which is kind of nice on this thing, so I'll bring that as well. And then obviously a battery bank. Um, I want to upgrade this. This one itself is really good. It's from Eddie Bauer. Um, a friend just gave it to me. Um, I really like it. It holds its charge really well, and it can hold quite a bit. Like I think this charges my iPhone over a couple times. Um, and it definitely charges these batteries, but uh, I think for longer trips I'm going to need a bigger system. And I'm looking into the BioLite solar charger. Uh, I'd really, really like to get that one. I think that it will suit my needs perfectly on my longer canoe trips, or hiking trips, whatever. Even winter trips, right? So, that. And then, um, sometimes I'll bring an extra lens. The one I'm using right now has a really nice, like, uh, focus bokeh for anyone who knows anything about cameras. It's, it's got, um, it's a prime lens, so I just find it looks a little better, the image, but this is just the kit lens and it has a bit of a zoom on it, so sometimes I'll bring that. Yeah. That's pretty much all my camera gear, other than the one you're watching this on and my cell phone, which is just an iPhone iPhone 11 Pro, um, and I'll do a lot of filming on this too, actually, so it's pretty much part of my filming kit at this point. And I also have a GoPro Hero 8 that I take on some trips if I want Ryan to have like a point of view perspective, and uh, yeah. So as far as gear goes, we're pretty much done. The only thing uh, that I really have left to kind of show you guys my opinion on is clothes. So, clothes can vary from person to person, obviously, from trip to trip. Uh, if it's going to be colder, you bring warmer clothes. If it's going to be warm, you bring cooler clothes, obviously. Um, but I'll show you some of my staples for the, like, going into warm weather kind of deal. Or, sorry, going into colder weather. Because um, a lot of our canoe trips, uh, fall is is honestly my favorite time to canoe trip. There's no bugs. It's uh, the air is nice and crisp, so it's it's good for traveling. You don't get super hot and sweaty on you know either while you're canoeing or portaging. Anyways, um, so I'll bring a nice fleece sweater. This one's by the North Face. Uh, fleece is just really good. It breathes so well and wool wool is the best option really. Um, but it's pretty expensive, so fleece, fleece is a nice uh, in-between, still does the trick kind of thing. For colder weather trips, I'll bring a base layer. Um, the, usually I'll bring a base layer starting like mid to late uh, October. <sighs> I won't really bring one before that, but just a shirt anyways, not pants, but when it gets, when it gets into the colder weather, I'll bring a uh, base layer of pants. This is just a cheap kind of brand base layer. I would like to get myself some merino wool base layer stuff. I do have a base layer shirt that's merino wool, um, but yeah. And then, you know, just like an extra t-shirt. <laughs> AquaQuest actually sent me that. <laughs> I think it looks pretty sick. But just like an extra t-shirt, um, wool socks, super, super good. I always bring one pair to sleep in and one pair to travel in and I will switch them out every morning and every night. Um, so like clean play the clean pair stays clean and dry always. And then the wet pair, dirty pair, whatever you want to call it, stays wet and dirty. That's just a smart way to do it. Um, I'll bring some lightweight shorts if it's warmer. And then if it's real real cold, a puffy jacket is the best thing on the planet. I cannot highly recommend this enough, having a puffy jacket of some sort. Um, 
This one I got for 45 bucks Canadian at Costco like years ago and I've not been able to find such a good deal since. Um, it packs up super small and I actually went on cold weather trips when I have this. I will not absolutely not bring a pillow because um, this is all I need. It packs up into a little bag, into its own little bag and I use that as a pillow. I really like it and of course it doubles as a really really warm layer and yeah just layering layering clothes the best way to stay warm obviously if you get dumped in your canoe and everything gets wet that really sucks um, so I try not to bring too many clothes I like to have one pair that I absolutely kind of use every day and then a nice dry pair for at night but if it's really really cold sometimes I'll bring you know a, a, even a third shirt in there um, extra socks but for the most part I, I pretty much uh, live like a peasant and bring as little as I possibly can because I much prefer to go lightweight than deal with all kinds of stuff that you never end up using at the end of the trip you know well guys that's it for this video um, I hope it was helpful for you um, like I said it's been highly highly requested so I really wanted to finally get that out like I said it would and I am I'm going to get back into a regular filming schedule and uh, try and get some good content out for you guys. I have a lot of stuff planned for the fall. Uh, fall is fall and winter are probably my favorite seasons for camping and getting outdoors. Summer is uh, is a lot of chilling on the beach for me. So, so yeah, we've kind of had a nice little hiatus. I really appreciate all your patience waiting for waiting for the channel to pick up again. Um, obviously COVID took a hit on a lot of outdoors channels as well. I've explained this in a past video, but uh, the views and stuff were just way, way down for a lot of the outdoors channels out there, which really, really sucked. And it just kind of took away the fun. Anyways, that's my spiel. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any questions at all, um, please leave them down below. I'll try to answer them as best I can. Thank you guys for all the support. I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video.